In a previous video, we looked at uh, developing a preference schedule. Remember, in that case, there were 12 different people who were listing their preferences for A, B, and C. And so their first, second, and third choices were listed here. We built a, a preference schedule and would like to just talk briefly about how we knew there were really six different preferences and how this table should be constructed. In a preference ballot, the, uh, the various choices that someone can choose from are going to be listed in some order, probably alphabetically, as they are in this case. So in this case, there are only three different choices. So let's examine those for a minute. Notice that a person could, in their first choice, either choose A, or they could choose B, or they could choose C. So we're going to represent this with a tree diagram. And regardless of how many choices there are, this first branch of the tree could list them in the order that they're listed on the uh, uh, preference ballot. Usually that will be in alphabetical order. If a person chooses A as their first choice, now they only have two choices for their second uh, choice out of the three. So they could either choose B or C as their second choice. Similarly, if they chose B as their first choice, now they only have two choices and those choices are going to be either A or C. In each case, we're going to list these in the order that, uh, that they're listed on the, on the ballot. Finally, if they chose C as their first choice, then they could either choose A or B as their second choice. Once those choices are made, look, you can follow down any one of these branches. If you chose A and then B, the only choice left is C. If you chose A and then C, the only choice left is B. So each one of these branches show one of the preferences that are available. A first, B second, C third. A first, C second, B third. In this case, the only choice left is a C. In this case, the only choice left is an A. In this case, the only choice left is a B. And in this case, the only choice left is a C. Now notice we can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, corresponding to the six different choices that are here. And notice that they end up being listed essentially in alphabetical order. That's called a lexicographical ordering. We can count how many there are here because in the first choice you have as suppose that there were five uh, choices for that first choice. Well, let's just look at this case. In this case there were three choices for the that we could make for our first choice. Once that was made, there were only two choices left for the second choice, and finally there's only one choice left for the third choice. This kind of arithmetic is called a factorial, and a shorthand notation for that is three with an exclamation point. That's called three factorial. If we had had five choices, A, B, C, D, and E, then we could have chosen any one of those as our first preference, once that was chosen, there would only be four choices for the second preference, then three choices for the third preference, two choices for the next preference, and one choice for the final preference. Or in other words, that would be five factorial is the shorthand notation for that. Okay, that's the idea.